Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at numbers in algebra. More particularly, we're going to look at a specific classification called algebra and look at a subcategory called fractions. So to do that, we're going to take a look at this short description that provides us with some general information all about this topic. So fractions are numbers which are usually not integers and can be written in this specific form. If you can try and think of fractions as the numerator divided by the denominator, you can kind of represent it using the division symbol where the numbers actually then replace the dots in the division symbol. A useful definition to know is that a, de a, sorry, a reciprocal of a fraction is simply the denominator and numerator swapping places. This is really important to remember when dividing fractions, and they give us an example of how a reciprocal works here. Okay, so fractions questions is all about adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing with fractions. So that means we actually need to understand what a fraction actually is. Now, the question information, sorry, the information here on the page tells us that fractions are just numbers that usually aren't integers. Now, integers are just your everyday normal average whole numbers. So your one, two, three, to infinity, all of those are um, integers. Now fractions are all of the numbers that are present in between all your integers. So these fractions are generally going to be parts of a number and that part is represented using this structure. So the numerator is whatever number is on top of the fraction and it's basically the number of parts that we have. The denominator is the number that goes in the bottom of the fraction and it represents the number of parts the whole number is divided into. So that a quick, really easy way to remember which part is the numerator and which part is the denominator is that I've always remembered it as the letter D stands for down. So whatever's on the bottom part is the denominator and whatever's on the top is then the numerator. So even uh, because the numerator and denominator represent the parts of the whole number, it's kind of like using the division symbol. So you know how the division symbol looks like this? Well, the circles are basically blank spots for the numerator and denominator to be to fit into. So if you then replace the dots with, whoops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> if you replace the top dot with say a number and replace the bottom dot with a another number, so the numerator and denominator, bam, you got a fraction. So the division symbol and fractions are basically kind of the same thing. This fraction, even if you represent it as three over four, in reality is the same thing as three divided by four. So that's essentially what this form represents. Now enough about the structure. Uh, fractions can have some special properties that are a bit different to every other kind of number in maths. And that's because you can only add fractions or subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. So that's where this distinction of knowing what the denominator and the numerator is gets a bit quite important. So making sure the bottom number is the same has to be very important whenever you do addition or subtraction. It doesn't really matter when you're doing division and multiplication because that requires a different technique and that is where the concept of reciprocals actually comes into play. Well, more so with division rather than multiplication because reciprocals is just what happens if you flip the position of the de denominator and the numerator around. So for example, going back to the three over four, the reciprocal would just be four over three. Now you ask, why is this relevant? Why is this important? Well, reciprocals basically makes division really easy. So for example, let's say we have a question that says, find three over four divided by nine over 16. So the thing is with fractions, dividing by a fraction is exactly the same as multiplying 
by the reciprocal. So what you do is multiply, change the division sign into a multiplication sign and flip the fraction around. These two answers are exactly the same. And you can see this is way easier than finding this because you can simplify the fraction and very easily figure out that your answer is just 4 over 3. So those are the things that you really need to keep at the back of your mind whenever you're forced to do these fraction questions. So let's try and see if we can apply the knowledge that we've just learned to this example question. So it's the hope that we can use these techniques in any kind of fraction question we encounter. So let's give it a go. This question says, Kelly has bought four pizzas to share with three of her friends. Kelly has eaten a certain amount of pizza, Ollie has eaten another part of a pizza, and Maxime has eaten another part. Now, we're told that Lachlan ate half of the remaining pizza slices available. So, how much pizza did Lachlan eat? Okay, so that means we need to figure out the remaining amount of pizza to figure out the amount of pizza that Lachlan has eaten. So if we have four pizzas, let's say uh, since each of these people have eaten part of a pizza, we can figure out how much is left over. If Kelly has eaten three quarters of one whole pizza, then the remainder is just going to be, well, this would be 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4. Remembering that you can only do subtraction when the denominator is the same. This gives us one quarter of a pizza left. For Ollie, he's also eaten one pizza, but only ate 7 eighths of it. So we are left with 1 eighth of a pizza. Maxime, it looks like she's actually gone into two pizzas and has eaten one and two thirds of a pizza. So that means we only have one third of a pizza left. Okay, so that means of the four pizzas we began with, we've only got these fractions left over. And Lachlan has eaten half of these pizzas. So it makes sense that if we add all these fractions together, then see what half of it is, we'll be able to figure out how many pizza slices Lachlan has eaten. So let's do exactly that. If I try to change that into a number sentence, we would have one quarter plus one eighth plus one third, and half of that would be the amount of pizza Lachlan has eaten. Now, the issue here is all the denominators here are very different. So we need to convert these fractions into what's known as equivalent fractions to make sure that all the denominators are the same. The fun part about fractions, or the unfun part, depending on how you see it, is that fractions can be pretty much infinitely converted into equivalent fractions. Because if you just multiply the top number and the bottom number by the same number, you get a fraction that's numerically exactly the same, just written in a different format. So if I multiply both the top and bottom by two, we get two out of eight, and this fraction is identical to this fraction. So knowing that helps us figure out what the denominator has to be for this specific question. And that requires us to know what's called the LCM. And you'll see this quite often in fraction questions. Now, LCM stands for lowest common multiplier or multiple, I should say. So the lowest common multiple is just basically the lowest multiplication of each of these numbers that match up. So for example, uh, if we have the number four, the multiples of four is four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16, and that just goes on and on. The multiples of eight would be uh, eight times one is eight, eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24, eight times four is 32. The lowest, uh, sorry, the multiples of three would just be three, six, nine, 12, 15, etc. So that means the lowest common multiple is the number that appears in all three sets of numbers. And it actually looks like I do need to 
continue the multiples of three because the numbers don't seem to act, match up. So we've got 18, we've got 24, we've got 27, 30, and now we can spot that there is a number that appears in all three sets of numbers if I do this. <laughs> so that means 24 is the only number that appears in all three sets and is the smallest number to do so. So because these multiples can infinitely grow, there are different numbers that do so, but we specifically want the lowest common multiple just so it's really easy to simplify the fraction when we need to later. And that's another very important concept is that Whenever we write our fractions, we want our final answer to be the simplest form uh, written. So we always want to make sure that we can simplify. And that's just because it's easier to comprehend smaller fractions rather than gigantic ones. So bearing that in mind, we figured out that the lowest common multiple of these three numbers is 24. So now we can make sure that all these fractions can be converted into their equivalent fractions. So the 1 on 4 needs to be transformed into something over 24. So the transformation applied to these two numbers is that we've actually multiplied the bottom by 6. That means we need to multiply the numerator by 6 as well. So 1 times 6 gives us 6. Same strategy for 1 over 8. The 8 has been transformed by multiplying 3 to the bottom to get 24. So we do the same to the numerator. 1 times 3 is equal to 3. And finally, exact same strategy for 3, we get the equivalent fraction as being 8 over 24. So now that all the denominators have been equalized, we can just add these numbers together to get 17 over 24 as our correct answer. Now, that is the answer for how much pizza is left over once Kelly, Ollie and Maxime has had a go. Remember that Lachlan has eaten exactly half of the remaining pizza slices available. So taking this fraction, we want to find what half is. So 17 over 24 times by a half gives us 17 on 48. Now, since both of these numbers are not even numbers and they're not divisible by each other, this is the most simplified form, which means that all we need to do now is figure out which answer option it is. It has got to be option C. Okay, so that is the answer to this question. We can see that by making sure that our denominator is always the same whenever you do, addition or subtraction was the biggest crucial thing for this question and making sure we understood the concept of the lowest common multiple. Once you have those, you should be able to tackle a bunch of these questions with ease or at least that's what I hope you'll achieve after listening to this video. So that brings us to the end and I thank everyone for paying attention to this video today.